social media. Hi, today, friends, and welcome to Weekend Edition. I'm Jason Salas, hoping you are having a fantastic island weekend. Well, a key advisor in our top story to the governor says if there's one thing the COVID crisis has shown again is that the island's economy needs to be diversified. Former Chief Executive Carl Gutierrez says he's working on a series of initiatives on behalf of the Leongoro administration that he hopes will provide a much needed boost. Even though he's been appointed the interim president and CEO of the Guam Visitors Bureau, Gutierrez says we should try to expand beyond tourism. For one, leverage the goodwill Governor Leon Guerrero generated by helping out the virus-stricken USS Theodore Roosevelt. We're trying to get the Navy to say, uh, you know, bring, bring back the ship repair facility in Guam and not go to Singapore anymore. We've been fighting the Navy with that. I've been to Washington, D.C., and we've got some very, very uh, sympathetic years, especially when I met with a, an old friend, uh, uh, Garamendi, who was in charge of this installation and the and, and chairman in the House. And uh, he uh, he's agrees with, 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 with our push to get the Navy to, to start, uh, let's say, bringing back th that dry dock for certification here and hopefully stay here. Garamendi is California Congressman John Garamendi, a former Interior Department official who now chairs the House Armed Services Subcommittee on Readiness. Another potential opportunity, says Gutierrez, is using telecommunications to draw in companies seeking to flee the volatile situation in Hong Kong. We're trying to use uh, as much of the fiber optics that's on the island, undersea uh, fiber optics, we have more per capita than any place else in the world going in and out of Guam. And we are in the Asia time zone. We're trying to invite right now, we've got uh, someone looking in, in Hong Kong for U.S. businesses that want to get out of Hong Kong, and we're looking at, at bringing them to Guam in a real World Trade Center kind of a setting. And one other initiative Guterres is working on is offering tax incentives to U.S. corporations in foreign countries looking to repatriate uh, profits. Trump reduced the corporate tax from 35 percent to 21 percent. When he reduced that, he hopes that they will repatriate their profits back to the United States, right? Not too much came out of that. So then he gave them a window of one year. He knocked it down to 15 percent. And not to, some people did, I think uh, maybe, I don't know how many billions, but some took advantage of that, but then it stopped. And uh, so we're saying, so it's back at 21 now. So we're saying we're gonna use the qualifying certificate program to bring those people here, and we're gonna uh, give them a qualifying certificate, and some of that will stay here. He says all that needs to be done is to change the law that lifts the 1% cap on third-party commissions. Once we do that, I, I foresee that those people are ready to come here and set up a uh, uh, qualifying certificate program for them. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Harvest Christian Academy may be making its way back on campus next school year as Administrator Jeremy Zachik says they're getting ready for on-site operations to resume on the 13th of August for the 2020 school year. The re-entry task force has been established to create a strategy supporting the educational needs of students and prioritizing health and safety. Harvest has nearly 1,000 students enrolled and about 80 faculty and staff. We've been in communication with the governor's office uh, and other agencies to determine when we might know specifically what we can do. Um, and so we're waiting to hear back on that. But our, our plan at this point is if Guam allows us to, we're going to resume outside camp, uh, campus. We're also launching other um, TDC local municipalities in the states to see what guidance we are um, releasing for schools. And so, um, yeah, trying to plan for all contingencies and uh, different elements of social distancing and, and health and safety precautions. Should the government order school closures or limit on-site student capacity, Harvest Christian Academy has a contingency plan, including online learning. For more information and to follow re-entry updates, visit hcaguam.org. Staying with the educational beat now, Catholic schools have made plans and taken measures to reopen in July, pending GovGuam guidance and direction. Superintendent of Catholic Education Dr. Juan Flores tells KUAM's Containing COVID program that the schools will fill classes at half capacity, and they also plan to use a combination of person-to-person -person teaching and distance learning. Dr. Flores says according to plans, distance learning may not be that distant for Catholic school students. They could fact. do it at home, but um, our, our strong feeling is that 
um, especially for the elementary students up to the eighth grade, the reason there are a couple of reasons why we why we want them in school. Uh, number one is to help the parents out because mm-hmm. we don't want the parents having to worry about what the kids are going to do on the days they're not in class. And the second is we feel that if they're doing the distance learning in school, um, any kind of distance learning in school, that they're going to be supported by those who are going to be monitoring their work. Um, they could be other faculty members. They could be staff members who've been trained to go online with the students to help them with written assignments. Flores continued to say the Catholic schools are slated to avail themselves of services paid for with Federal CARE Act funding to be divided by the public school system. We get an equitable distribution of that CARES Act money. So there's some money set aside, I can't remember the percentage, for administrative costs. And then all of the money, you know, there's $41 million. Some of it's set aside for administrative functions. And the rest of the money is going to be equally distributed based on student population among both public and non-public school students. Now, Dr. Flores, himself a former DOE superintendent, says Catholic schools reopened on the 2nd of August with most of July dedicated to staff development and training. In other island news matters this evening, the emergency food assistance program will revert back to the PD warehouse by the end of the month. The lead agency for the operation is GDOE, and they say discussions are underway to broaden the eligibility requirements so more families impacted by COVID-19 may participate in the food support initiative. Relief is not here yet, and, it, and I think it's really troubling for us to uh, to think about reducing the food support, you know, without the, you know that relief in place. So our effort is to figure out if we can get that flexibility to to, to continue with expanded food support, and we will. Uh, if, if we're successful, then we'll announce announce that at, at the right uh, moment or the appropriate date. The emergency food commodities distribution sites were closed last week. GDOE was approved for another 12,000 bags from Uncle Sam. Also tonight, it's a one Pacific approach to combating drug trafficking. As as we reported on Tuesday, CNMI and Guam Attorneys General issued a joint press release in which they announced they are petitioning to form a coalition with Hawaii to combat drug trafficking, seeking high-intensity drug traffic area designation. It would funnel more resources to law enforcement to address the drug crisis. Both the CNMI and Guam were denied the designation in their respective prior applicants. Here's Guam Attorney General leaving Camacho with more on this matter. We may be able to access federal law enforcement information, so we're able to properly vet um, where these containers are coming from, who's sending them, and potentially identify bad actors before they get here. Now, government officials from the NMI, Hawaii, and Guam have thrown their support behind the effort. He says HITA works in tandem with local efforts. We're averaging at least one overdose death per year and they're having to treat um, overdoses regularly at GMH, right? So opioids, they're, they're going to potentially look at ways outside of Haida with other federal programs to get additional resources to Guam to help with our opioid problem. The regional AGs continue to gather letters of support during the rolling admissions. Please stay tuned, everybody. Keep streaming and keep watching us because we will return. And when we do, Adriana's got transpired. Get up-to-the-minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. More freedom. To learn more. To create more. To connect more, mix and match data paths. Take your data further. During these uncertain times, it's important to remember that we are in this together. The Cowboys Insurance Team has continued to service the needs of our customers. As in the past 80 years, you can count on us to be here when you need us most, when it comes to your health and the health of your family. Let's continue making the right choices by staying home, staying safe, and staying healthy. We are all in this together, and together we will rise again.
It makes myself and it makes my team members very proud to work for an organization that has been on island for many years with its focus on reliability, dependability, and commitment to the communities that they operate in. Matson's a great corporate citizen to the community. We all benefit from any sort of environmental commitment we make. One of the ways that we do that is with our Adahi Utano program. There's action behind it, and so action breeds commitment. With the Kaimana Gila coming to Guam, this brings a new age and modernization to the island. It's exciting for me because it's a brand new ship and we can carry more freight into the island. It just shows growth for Guam and Micronesia. Matson would be nothing without its customers, and we hope to continue to serve you for decades to come. DNA Evolution and Billabong Guam are open and ready with great gifts for Father's Day. Open this weekend on Saturday and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Spend $100 and receive the new 2020 Best Summer Tea. Check out the sale racks for some great deals starting at 50% off. DNA Evolution at the plaza below CPK in Tumon. Call 649-2371. Parking available at the Deucet Resort Guam. Happy Father's Day from everyone at DNA Evolution and Billabong Guam. What a week it's been for news. COVID cases are up, and it was also a big week for our delegate, Congressman Michael San Nicolas, who is now under an ethics probe. Let's get right into it. Off a day, I'm Adriana Cotero, and this is Trend Spotting. Guam is casting a wide net mass testing in villages for the contagious COVID-19. But this week, almost all newly confirmed virus cases were coming from behind the gate. By Friday, the Department of Defense reported 15 positive cases from a unit deployed to the Anderson Air Force Base. Those members were staying at the Reef Hotel in Tuman and taken back on base after they tested positive. Here's what you thought about this pressing issue. Maria Pareto says that's because Lulu wants to open up the island. Just be careful and take all precautionary people of Guam. Bobby says they need to test arriving passengers. Opening up the airport is bound to happen, but we need to be proactive in keeping Guam numbers low and us safe. Another comment says if everyone follows CNN or the news on the states, USA leads the world in top COVID-19 cases in the world, and we are still letting them roll through the airport like nothing is really going on. Just stay safe, Guahan. Hope those service members get treatment and quarantine themselves. And on our Instagram, Sean writes, Please increase the recoveries, Lord. Frontliners, thank you for staying up late night to find medicines to the COVID-19. Turning our attention to Guam Delegate Michael San Nicolas, we learned last week a congressional probe has been launched into allegations that range from an affair with a staffer to campaign finance violations. While San Nicolas brushed it off as a merely, quote, a part of the process, unquote, local leaders are much more concerned, including former Guam Delegate Robert Underwood, who said, quote, this is not just part of the process. Process. He is representing us. He is Guam in Washington, D.C. He needs to come home and he needs to explain to the people of Guam what he did. What is he being accused of? Unquote. Even our closest congressional neighbor, CNMI delegate Gregorio Kalili Sablan, weighed in saying he needs to answer this and only he can answer this. The ongoing saga stems from a complaint made to the House Ethics Committee last year by former San Nicolas staffer J.P. Manuel. And the comments keep on coming. Joseph Cruz says Congressman Michael San Nicolas was elected by the people of Guam to represent our island in Congress, and he has done an amazing job doing so, making things happen in Congress to get the much help needed from the people of Guam during this hard pandemic time that we, the people of Guam, are experiencing. One of our top fans, Cheryl Jensen, said, How has he represented Guam? He has the worst voting record ever. Even if he is cleared of these allegations, the fact that his integrity has been called into question is an embarrassment to the people of Guam who elected him. And it was a hard week for the island's homeless who took up shelter at Paseo and Hagania. On Thursday, they were told to pack up and get out with nowhere to go, which was extended to Friday. Parks and Rec's head, John Birch, called into containing COVID and said they're clearing out prime parks in anticipation of reopening tourism. The boot comes after Operation Safe Haven at Paseo were scrapped. Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio earlier this week said plans for a concrete structure have been amended four times. Active procurement is underway, and he hopes to have a better answer by Monday. And this is what you had to say. One of our top fans writes, why not use the old empty police station in Aganya? What is the progress of the homeless shelter project under the lieutenant governor? Where is the federal money's allocation for homeless shelters? This is unbelievable. 
ill, Cundiff says this situation has been going on for decades without any real solution in sight. Regardless of who is to blame, our government must help our poor and homeless brothers, sisters, and their children. Nip it now before it really becomes a grave situation. Bernie Tova says, move yourself, Lou and Josh. These people are human beings. How can you sleep at night knowing this is what you signed up for? Stop with the delays. Help our people. Let's round this all off with a powerful poem that's caught the island's attention just as the fight against racism has gone global. University of Guam alum Jojo Area wrote Chuki Confessions No. 1 after she saw a racist comment against Chuki's people inside a bathroom at school. She was born and raised in Chuk and came to Guam for college in 2012, and she struggled with hiding her Chuki's identity to blend into the Western culture. Although she's in Iowa, Area shared her poem and story with Victoria Fallon on our One Micronesia podcast. Here's a taste. Is it possible for a Micronesian to be something more than her snap card, her Section 8 housing, or her colorfully embroidered mumus and zuki? What do we say to our children? Do we teach them that there is a great big world full of diverse peoples and cultures? Or do we urge them to hide their zuki, themselves, and their heritage? Do we teach them to fear the repercussions of being unabashedly Micronesian? Before we head into another week, I strongly urge you all to check out our One Micronesia podcast that includes the full poem and interview streaming live now on all our social media platforms. I'm Adriana Catero. Adios. We are open to serve you at Cars Plus Guam. Need a quick service for your vehicle? Visit our express lane at Cars Plus. Done fast, done right. No appointment needed. Our service team is dedicated to helping you get your vehicle in and out of the shop and back on the road quickly and secure. Simply drop off your vehicle at our express lane driveway and one of our service advisors will take care of you. Need a ride? Not to work. We have a shuttle vehicle ready to drop you back home and pick you up when your vehicle is ready. Open Monday to Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Visit us today. We are open to serve you. Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience. And now here's the Claris boys, Ryan and Paul, with another Daily Maintenance lesson. Hi, hey, this is Ryan Claris from Custom Fitness, licensed physical therapist. Here we go again. We're on segment number 13 with our Daily Maintenance program, and this is our run series number five. So as we've been talking about, we want to be able to debunk some of the treatment methods for some of these injuries that we see for runners out there. Coach, you've been running quite often, right? And quite a lot, especially during this quarantine. Uh, what part of your body is hurt, uh, has been, begun to hurt? Man, you? coach, right about right well, there. Right around there. So a lot of times when people come into us, they complain about this posterior leg pain. So coach, can you just kind of uh, go aside. So right in here, we see this Achilles tendon right in this bottom, bottom portion right in here. Let's go over the general anatomy of this. What we, want is, what we want to notice is that everything from the knee all the way down to the big foot is intertwined. So that means this is big gastroc muscle right here, this soleus right here, connects all the way through through this Achilles tendon, then attaches right here, which is the heel, which is the calcaneus, goes underneath the foot, through that plantar fascia area, and then all the way through the big toe. So coach, all those muscles combined, that means a lot of load and a lot of tension as we begin to run and increase load. So when we, when we increase load too fast, too often, what normally happens? Injuries. Injuries. So what we want to be able to do is teach you ways how to address Achilles tendon pain. Now, now what we want to, what we want to mention is there's two types of Achilles tendinopathies. That means that there's ones that are mid or non-insertional, so it's right kind of right here in this general region right in here, and one that actually shoots all the way down to right, in the hip, right into the heel or the calcaneus. The one that we're gonna be talking about treatment is kind of this non-insertional pain right in here. If you do have insertional pain, go see a physical therapist. They should help be able to help you with that because it's a little bit of a different treatment option. So here's what we need to do. Four steps, coach, to kind of uh, improve uh, that Achilles. Number one, we wanna make sure that we enhance the tissue and control pain. That is our first step. Number two, we want to be able to build capacity of that tissue and the surrounding tissues 
Number three, we want to then build more capacity with dynamic movement. And number four, we then want to be able to build capacity with specific movements. Coach, does that sound good? That sounds an excellent coach. So in this specific case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working with running. Uh, the goal is to be, be able to run. Now, first step is we're going to be able to enhance tissue capacity and decrease pain. So if you have any pain with lifting off, going up and down stairs, running and jumping, this is what we want to start with. We don't, coach, worst thing you can do is what? Start stretching all, all of a sudden. People stretch all the time. Oh, it feels a lot better. Yes, you will find quick relief, but it will not last for long because guess what's going to happen? It's going to hurt some more because all those loads just keep on coming back. You have done nothing to the actual tendon and the fascia down there to help it. So what we want to be able to do is show you some exercise to do that. So here's what we're going to do. Now you can do this double or single leg. Now depending on the bias, I like, we like starting it off with a double leg because normally if you have one side, majority of the time it goes to the other side. Other side. So what we're going to do is we're going to do double leg and we're just going to do a little sitting. And all we're going to do is, if you notice, we're just going to go ahead and go through the big toe. Heels come up off the ground and we're just going to be squeezing nice and tight through those calves. We want to hold for about 10 seconds and go ahead and coach and come on up. Very, very simple. So remember, we, have, we want to be able to do this. This addresses the lower part of the posterior chain. And then coach, do me a favor. You're going to go ahead and can you stand for me? Let's go ahead and stand. And we're going to go ahead and stand. We're going to just go ahead and use this and we're going to go ahead and double again. So now that we're going to go with straight leg, we're going to be working now this top portion of it. Remember the bottom part was for the, uh, the, the bottom sitting with the bend knee, that's for the bottom. This is not for the top. Now, let's see if we want to be able to bias it. So in this particular case, Coach Paul's left side is hurting even more than the right. So all we're going to do is we're going to do one hand. Go ahead, Coach. You're going to go with straight leg and go ahead and come on up. And if you notice, he's able to just hold that top position again. This is no movement. All we're doing is an isometric hold. Hold that. 10 seconds, three, two, coach, put your other leg down. If you want to rest, remember, we're not focusing on any of this up and down movement. All we're doing is coming on up, using two feet, then going and go ahead and hold. Now, we said that we want to do two things, so all we're going to do is now go ahead and bend the knee, coach, on that one, and now we're going to go ahead and feel that and hold that, coach. You okay then? Um, yeah. You feel that? It's hurting. I'm, I'm doing my rehab right now. We're doing a rehab. So, once we start reducing the pain, Right? And we want to say, hey, by the way, we already started enhancing. We want to then start building capacity. So now that we've kind of reduced the pain and we're starting to kind of enhance this tissue ability, what we want to do is build the capacity to withstand larger, larger loads. Now, coach, easy enough, functional movement. We're going to go ahead and do the double leg hill iso squat. Again, still using the no movement method. So all we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and squat from this position. We're going to coach come up just a little bit in terms of that squat. And then we're just going to go and bring those heels up. If you notice, again, going over those big toes, we're just going to go and hold. 10 seconds. How are we doing there, coach? You doing okay? Yeah, I'm doing okay. It's much harder to kind of focus on these exercises when we're doing them correctly. Again, hold three, two, and then go ahead and relax. We're just going to do that one more time. Again, this is a double leg heel iso squat. So we're quarter squat here. Come off the heels. Make sure to go over those big toes, coach. Quarter squat gang. And quarter squat gang, here we go. If you want a quarter squat, this is the way to do it. Bring your heels off the deck and go ahead and come on off. Then all we're going to do is go ahead and again, go through that functional, just kind of the functional movement. We're going to go split stance. Now again, focusing on this leg right here, all we're going to do is from this position, lift and hold. No, no holds there, coach. Right in there. Try that, that knee out for me. Hold. 10 seconds. Easy enough. So remember, we did a squat with the double leg raise. We're doing a split stance with the, uh, with the front leg raise here. And then the last one, coach, we said squat, right? Split sets. Now we're going to go ahead and lunge, coach. We're going to go ahead and all we're going to do is go ahead and battle lunge to the left. Boom, hold that position. Get nice and comfortable. And then we're just going to go. Again, we are building capacity in terms of these functional tasks that we kind of do in the gym. Not weighted, not anything. All we're doing is go ahead and come on up. And one more time, coach. Boom. And hold. Remember, exercise prescription for these. 10 rounds. 10 second holds for each of these movements. Remember, do this, the first set for about maybe a, uh, six to eight days. The next set you can do to six to eight days. This again is series number five in our running series, trying to help with Achilles tendinopathy, uh, tendinopathy which is the non-insertional type or the right in this area, okay? So thank you again for joining us. 
King's restaurants are still cooking up your favorite breakfast, lunch, and dinner plates and have them available for carryout and delivery. Call them into Munning at 647-5464 or in Dedito at 637-5464 and order for carryout. For delivery, please download the free Grab and Grub app and follow the instructions to get King's delivered to your door. Be safe and stay healthy until we see each other again at King's. More freedom. To learn more. To create more. To connect more. Mix and match data paths. Take your data further. DNA Evolution and Billabong Guam are open and ready with great gifts for Father's Day. Open this weekend on Saturday and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Spend $100 and receive the new 2020 Best Summer Tea. Check out the sale racks for some great deals starting at 50% off. DNA Evolution at the plaza below CPK in Tumont. Call 649-2371. Parking available at the Deucet Resort Guam. Happy Father's Day from everyone at DNA Evolution and Billabong Guam. Here now are your birthday shout outs. Here's how your weekend birthdays go on Saturday the 20th. Preston Day Conception Tyrone. Happy birthday number four to my grandson, Preston. We love you, say Grandma Jenny, your big sister Laya, mom and dad, as well as the Conception, Tyrion, and Napatee family. Happy birthday to one of King Lim's own, Zane Cruz. Happy birthday to you, Nick. On the 21st, Sunday, the day of rest. Happy birthday to James T. Paris. Happy 74th birthday, Dad and Grandpa, from your entire family. Also, Greeson Torres celebrates a birthday on Sunday, so happy birthday to you, Greeson. And Rosalie Villa Gomez, happy birthday to you and everyone who celebrates a birthday this weekend. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching the show. But of course, it is Father's Day weekend, and we want to congratulate and celebrate all of the wonderful dads out there because we have a special segment, the picture that you sent us. Here is my Guam dads. Not the mighty miss.